means here but an invitation to Asian countries to join a reforming China and an none too subtle dig at the new American isolationism. Openness brings progress while self-seclusion leaves one behind. We, the Asia-Pacific economies, know this too well from our own development experience. We should put in place a regional cooperation framework that ensures consultation among equals, cooperation, and shared benefits. Mr. Trump's tough talk on trade will go down well with many Americans. But here in Asia, you can almost feel American influence shrinking. And China waiting to take up the mantle. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Danang. Italian police have arrested the is in Vietnam attending the apex summit. The economic meetings are part of his 12-day trip through Asia, but one of the most anticipated parts of the trip may not even happen. That's a potential meeting between Mr. Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Aides confirmed that the two may step aside for an informal chat, but thus far their only interactions have been handshakes. Our Nick Robinson joins us live from Vietnam. Nick, any idea on whether there's going to be a meeting? Uh, Cyril, this morning there was another handshake and a couple of words exchanged when President Trump arrived at the APEC summit. He walked into the room where President Putin was, shook, shook his hand, had a couple of words, sat down at the table. Um, this may be the extent of it. Uh, Russian officials had played up their expectation that there would be perhaps even as much as a bilateral uh, on the U.S. side. They've been saying, no, that's not going to happen. Indeed, President Trump is not having any bilateral meetings here. So at the moment, um, we may have seen all we're going to get on this. We met a few months ago at the G20 meeting. It lasted for hours. Um, all right, we'll see about that. But tell us about the substance of the meetings so far. There's been a lot of talk about trade, and it seems Mrs. Trump's vision of economic nationalism clashing with the other visions that have been put forth. Sure, President Trump's uh, delivered a very strong message on trade. What the United States wants isn't uh, free trade as the rest of the world sees it, but one that he sees that's balanced, that's fair, that's reciprocal, and indeed over the door for all the other nations for bilateral trade talks. President Xi uh, talked about how globalization was the future, and that's the way to open this, and that's the way, um, if you don't partake in globalization, which in the implication of what it's saying is that President Trump is choosing another path, um, then in essence you get left behind. And and to that point today, you have other leaders here at the APEC summit, members of the TPP Trans-Pacific Partnership, of which the United States, until President Trump came to office, was part of as well. Um, President Trump pulled the United States out. I know those other 11 members are on the margins here at APEC, basically pushing ahead with that economic uh, partnership, leaving out the United States. So uh, President Trump, uh, you know, despite his very warm visit uh, with uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Japan, uh, faces this essentially being pushed back in his face here, uh, a rejection of what he stood up and spoke about, his style of trade, yesterday. Nick, something else that's interesting when you watch this meeting is that a person who has featured and who still features in the Russia investigation has showed up at these meetings alongside the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Tell us about this Russian oligarch, Oleg Deripaska. Sure, uh, a rich and important and powerful oligarch uh, in Russia, uh, a close associate of President Putin, also associated uh, with Paul Manafort, uh, who's now been indicted um, on charges of conspiring against the United States and money laundering. So questions about Oleg Deripaska's relationship with Paul Manafort and uh, you know information that uh, that uh, that's being investigated into the United States um, about. Manafort's relationship with other Russian officials um, uh, coming under scrutiny because of the Russian meddling in U.S. elections. So uh, Oleg Deripaska turning up here with those kind of connections. Obviously, uh, there are a lot of questions you would like to ask him. Our Matthew Chance got an opportunity. This is what happened. Deripaska, <laughs> 
So uh, the answer coming back from Derek Pasca there was he wasn't going to play ball with those questions uh, throwing out the lines fake news. Uh, clearly he wasn't going to uh, be doorstepped and answer these very pressing questions. But these are very important questions because uh, they appear to be involved very much in, in charges against Paul Manafort, who was, after all, President Trump's um, uh, lead campaign uh, official for, for, for a long period during, during part of uh, President Trump's campaign. Nick Robinson reporting live from Da Nang, Vietnam. Thank you very much. We'll speak to you in the coming hours. Now let's get to Daniel Lynch. He's a professor at City University of Hong Kong to talk more about the substance of these meetings as well. Uh, Mr. Trump's first with the Asian leaders. Now, the U.S. president says that he's willing to enter into bilateral deals with any willing country. But as Nick just pointed out, there's been no movement on that front and no bilateral meetings between the U.S. president and the Asian leaders. One of the difficult things, Cyril, about uh, negotiating with the U.S. under President Trump is Asian leaders can't be sure how long uh, his administration will last. I mean, they're not sure, they can't be sure whether he can actually deliver on any agreement that uh, he, he might sign. I'll give you an example. There was talk before the summit in China that China might uh, demand a new communique uh, comparable to those that established the foundations of U.S.-China relations in the 1970s and 80s to frame Taiwan's future moving ahead. But in the end, China didn't demand that, and I think one of the reasons is they couldn't be sure that someone like President Trump, who might not have the staying power, could actually deliver on an agreement like that. So look, one of the first things that Mr. Trump did when he came to power was he ended the TPP. Well, actually, he pulled the U.S. out of the, uh, the TPP, which was the trade deal the uh, Obama administration had set up with the Pacific Rim countries, the Asian countries in the region. Um, it turns out they're moving ahead with that trade deal just without the U.S. So are we witnessing the U.S. losing ground and losing influence in the region, or is that not how you read it? Well, let's see how it plays out, but on this question, a related important issue is I think it's really fascinating to think about how Trump's effusive praise of Xi Jinping's authoritarian China this past week must be playing out in Southeast Asian capitals today. I mean, as you know, most Southeast Asian countries hover on the, the boundary of authoritarian and democratic. So by praising Xi Jinping's China like that, he has sent a signal, a strong signal, that not only will the U.S. accept Asian authoritarianism as normal, but if it's effective and impressive, uh, the U.S. under Trump will go out of its prey. Terrific job blowing him away with the magnificence of Chinese history, because he had dinner in the Forbidden City, and going out of their way also to impress him with the strength of China now that it has risen so successfully in international relations. That's actually a key promise that uh, Xi Jinping made to the Chinese nation, that he'll restore China to uh, centrality even in world history and international relations. And he wanted to communicate that to President Trump during the summit, and I think he did that successfully, and it was in that context that Trump fell all over himself praising Xi Jinping and China. The shorthand vision of what's happening in the region is China up, U.S. down. You know, China is gaining an influence both economically and politically, while the U.S. is isolating itself uh, under this, this current leadership. Is that how you read things? That's how I read it, but again, we don't know how long the Trump administration, uh, frankly, is going to last. We know about the election results last week, last Tuesday in the United States, the Mueller investigation, and so on. So I think all through Asia, I think uh, leaders are asking themselves, well, is this going to continue? Is President Trump maybe an aberration? And so let's wait and see. It's interesting, if they move ahead on the TPP, those other countries without the U.S., that sort of reinforces this notion that they're saying, eventually the United States will be back, will return to normal. We want to create the conditions to welcome it back uh, when it does return and come back to normal. All right. We're also looking at the live pictures, by the way, of the uh, APEC leaders uh, lining up for that group photo, second one today, um, in Da Nang, Vietnam. We saw Mr. Duterte, Mr. Uh, Trudeau. Uh, we saw Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Uh, so we're looking, as we look at these live pictures, uh, let me get back to this trade issue. How much le What leverage, rather, does the U.S. have to get what the U.S. president wants, which is these bilateral deals, better trade deals for the U.S. Well, he has a great deal of leverage in terms of the negotiation. We've got to remember when it comes to trade with, let's China in, in particular, that uh, U.S. companies actually uh, make a lot of money going to China, investing in China, manufacturing for export, including back to the United States. So that's not entirely a loss. There is a huge trade deficit. There's no doubt about that. But it's not entirely 
a black and white situation where it's completely a loss for the united states and so trump would also have to be able to influence the investment decisions of u s multinational corporations he'd also have to be able to influence the buying decisions of u s households the consumption decisions of u s households if he's really committed to ending the uh, the deficit so the, of course the united states as the largest economy in the world is always going to have a lot of influence in international economic questions but it's not perhaps as much as president trump thinks all right daniel lynch speaking to us from hong kong thank you very much this as we were watching the line thank pictures you. of the leaders in the region lining up in Danang, Vietnam. And even in Asia, the stormy clouds of the Russian investigation loom over President Trump. The latest rumble, a Wall Street Journal report about former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The details now from CNNC and diplomatic correspondent Michelle Kaczynski. Well, this gets murkier, and it's not just Russia. The uh, family photo, this happened moments ago uh, for a bank. And of course, we've been wondering since the beginning, really, of Mr. Trump's Asia trip, whether or not he would have a meeting, whether formal or informal, a one-on-one -on -one with the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, remember that a few months ago, Mr. Trump, when he met Mr. Putin at a G20 meeting, um, spent ended up spending hours with him in a room discussing a whole range of topics. Sorry, those pictures just fed into us from Vietnam. Coming up after the break, U.S. goalkeeper Hope Solo is telling Portuguese media that former FIFA President Seth Blatter groped her at a new handshakes. A longer informal meeting is still possible during the summit. Republican support is eroding the U.S. Senate. Now we uh, seek 45, 47 I am on November 11, 2017. We, the ship approaching uh, Cuba, the city, coastal city of Slovenia. Approach Cuba, Slovenia right now. So, uh, I think we were right there around 8.30 uh, today, 8 or 8.30 today, the sun started to rise, walk around the ship right now. Beautiful weather. Uh, now uh, 7.17, 7.17, uh, the sun so the, the ship approaching uh, the port right now, go this way, this, uh, this uh, forward, beautiful sun, sunrise. Hey, put in, uh, in the ship.
À, tiếng chuông nhà thờ đổ đúng hay uh, for uh, November 11, 2017 uh, the ship uh, 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 Slovenia, the country next to uh, uh, Russia. Uh, last night, we, uh, last night we start at 6, 6 p.m. to go to here, and now we arrive. So we go today. The plan today we go out the ship, and we uh, t uh, take the tour to uh, uh, Lake Split, something like that, uh, to see the countryside view. Beautiful city here. Okay. Now we go to uh, the gate, go out uh, to uh, our township. Yeah, we are the gate right now. Most of them are all people. Uh, young, 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 come on. Young, 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 Đúng rồi á, thấy hình hôm nay xem là đúng không? Stress mà hết À, chị ơi, 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 chị Ừ, chỗ ai đó là tao bia tới ba tháng luôn nè Ồ Đi sếp qua chỗ đó Ồ, chỗ này đây Ừ Thằng nói chẳng ban người phát triển hết là Không nguyên danh người ta hết Đó người ta không đi cũng có quá Thì đó, tôi Ở đây nó xài Euro, chúng ta nghe tiền của nó Ở đây đi, đi tôi về rồi Chứ gì mình đi mình ghé mấy chỗ này kia, thấy không? Ờ, gần được còn mấy tiếng Đây giống mấy tiếng? Hai tiếng, quanh thì đó, hai tiếng hai, hai tiếng hai đó Một trăm hai chục cây số Cho là đi chập đi, hai tiếng đồng hồ Trong trong tour, trong trong cho trên tờ giấy của tôi nó cũng để driving tour áo Nhật là Plaza
Market open door market. Vàng nhiều hơn nha. Đây là vàng nhiều hơn. Thật ra mẹ lái cũng được, ông ba xe này mẹ lái được. Nhưng hồi xưa em học, hồi xưa em học lại một chiếc ship mà, chậm lại một. Uh, I just rent a car here uh, to go to uh, Blit, uh, B L E D, 
uh, the sea has a uh, lake. Um, so we go there and now we on on the way there. Uh, so we rent a car, uh, fifty nine dollar a day. So we go there. So the city here, uh, Seattle, very nice. Uh, yellow um, uh, leaf. Um, the all autumn. So that's why be be beautiful here. Now Luxiana and uh, Luxiana on the way to Blit, so we had 70 miles, 70 kilometer uh, away from the capital. But we don't stop by there, we go all the way to Blit.
looking mirror to uh, uh, left. See if left here. Thank you, mirror. Thank you, mirror, left. Where we come. Where we want to go. So we are about right to left. Three you, mirror. We uh, had to take a exit on the right. dưới thùng lũng dưới nó mới có lết để nó mới đẹp một chút này đẹp quá mấy em chụp đi chụp bao nhiêu chụp bao nhiêu bao nhiêu một bộ cả cái gì đó nó tận chỗ này camping được chỗ này có camping campground giờ kiếm chỗ hay là chạy một vòng chỗ này cái này để mẹ thâu cái chữ bled bled nha cái chữ trên hay là anh chạy vòng đi chạy vòng cái chữ bled này bled này coi hay quá mấy tàu đi vòng vòng đây đây mấy tàu hay thế nó đi tour mà tour chợ tới mà nói gì chỗ này hô tao nhiều hô tao nhiều là bút nó ôm chỗ kỳ nó vàng đỏ nó vàng đẹp quá rồi ôi ôi 
cây này. Ừ. Quá đẹp luôn á. Rồi bây giờ trước Wow. Ôi, 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 ôi. Cá đó, phải không? Ừ. Quá đẹp luôn. Đâu đâu ta? Đâu đi? Phải vô cái cái cái, cái shopping hay cái chợ nào đậu bà không đậu được. Được, được. Mấy mà mình đi lâu mình đừng có đậu lung tung như vậy. Đâu mà đâu lung tung rồi đó. Sao em nghĩ là phải vô cái parking cho trong cái chợ hay là vô cái hotel á Chứ chứ đừng có cái đậu ở đây người ta đậu thêm đồ đá ri thôi chứ đừng có đậu Không nói đừng nói Mà không phải chỗ parking mà thấy không Thôi được Thôi nè nó Lô xe lô gì không được vô nè Cái bảng đó đó theo Thấy cái bảng đó không Mô tô cũng không được đó Để bị tiết kết mất công lắm kiếm cái chỗ nào mà nhiều ca người ta đậu á mặc dù mình phải trả parking mình cũng phải trả đi đậu cũng tiếng hai tiếng không bao nhiêu hết đó đã đi qua được bên được bánh nhìn mình đã cháy á khỏi cần xuống không? Má hiểu không? Chạy vòng biết cái lết thôi khỏi xuống nó đi kệ cơ sinh mất thời giờ lắm. Như nó. Má hiểu không? Mình chạy vòng coi cái lết chơi thôi, hiểu không? Nó, mình về cái cái nếu mà mình muốn đi nhiều là nó không có đi đi kệ cơ sinh của đó lâu lắm. Phải chờ đợi nữa ba. Xuống xuống kiếm chỗ nào đậu ở đây là chụp tấm hình thôi. cái đó sôi răng không để ý chỗ này không được đâu có ba phải phạt đằng sau lưng người ta thì không được cái đó in Croatia Lake beautiful lake Here the boat go to that island, yeah. Small island.
Tại sẵn đột nó nó phải đột nó phải dễ thôi Cũng lặng đấy chứ Đây có vẻ lặng hơn ở dưới hôm qua nha Ừ <cười> Nó cho mình mũi chưa mình đi chèo mình á à. Mình tự chèo á Ừ, nó giữ ông cẩm nó cần gì Sao mà ý lắm, vừa à. đi một cốc hai vòng Không phải Có thời giờ đâu Chứ mày, à, nè Yes, a lot of fish. Yes. <laughs> Thấy cái bảng nâu nâu không? We go to Boeing about 10 uh, you know, from uh, this.
đây đi vô đây đi nè đâu có cái bộ hình đó mình cho cái bộ hình cờ bao la đó cái bộ hình bộ hình cả nào đó chơi chơi đây ok đây ok chạy con đường này nè con đường bao la này nè bao la là đẹp đó bao la ngược bao la ừ vừa chạy chút xíu rồi rồi chạy ra đi mà chụp hình xuống đi chụp hình đi chụp hình đi muốn xuống đi hình ba ba phải vô trong chứ bà đậu ngay giữa giữa ngã tư này không được đâu ba muốn đậu ba phải chạy vô trong có bốn cây số nó chỉ mấy giờ đi đi thì đâu có chụp hình chứ Boeing, Boeing in Slovenia, so Slovenia. Cái 
đường kia chắc đường xa lửa quá em Rồi gì nữa Đẹp quá hả? Rêu, rêu rốt đó Đẹp quá Nhìn Biết rồi Rút thằng chỉ đi chỗ này rút Nhân của Mỹ ở chứ bộ giỡn lắm <cười> Nước của đẻ 
cho ông lại Đây cho nó lạnh sớm á mấy đứa nhỏ đường thì nó cũng như đôi cành hay chuyện khác gì đâu. Tại mình biết nó thôi chứ nó cũng nằm yên đó chứ nó đi đâu. <cười> 